So what we're going to talk about today is we're going to talk about extreme deer management because now deer management <clears throat> has become extreme. I don't know if you hadn't noticed it, but the climate is giving us fits lately. And so we got some new challenges for deer. Also, we're going to talk about intensive deer management today, not extensive deer management. Extensive is what you practice on the, on the 150,000 acres you own or on other people's land. But intensive deer management is what you practice on what y'all have because we want to, to intentionally manage so we have more and better deer. Uh, what we're going to talk about is landscaping for whitetails, laying out your property so that the deer want to be there and not somewhere else. And also getting them to go across your property and do things the way you want them to do. And a big part of it is going to be nutrition management. And we're going to have uh, two talks today on nutrition management, some stuff you've never seen before or heard before. I promise you that. Uh, we'll talk about natural forage and supplemental, and we'll talk about feeds and feeding, all of our work in developing the perfect deer feeder. Food plots, we're going to talk about our new stuff with mass trees and our, our chestnut work, which we're really excited about. Minerals, of course, water, and then basically a system that works for you. Okay? So when people want to start managing deer, want to do something especially for the nutrition of the deer, they read something in the magazine or hear something on TV, and they just start out and just do something really foolish. Y'all walk around out there at those booths. Why do y'all buy some of the stuff you do? Okay, yeah, but, but the reason you do is you've got a lot of people telling you about a lot of things, you know? So uh, I don't want you to end up like that. Like that does. It was a little hot recently. Uh, people say, how hot was it? Well, <laughs> it was hot and it's been dry. And what we're talking about is, is uh, managing whitetails in a challenging environment. Now, you need to understand this. The first thing you always do in managing whitetail deer is you manage the native stuff first. You've got to have a plan to manage the native stuff first. Okay? A deer's world is this tall. No higher. Everything deer need on your property needs to be from my hand to the floor. Everywhere you walk around, there has to be a use for your deer. And we'll show you how you go about doing that in just a little bit. The first thing you do, and I've grown more Boone and Crockett bucks than anybody in the world, and the first thing we always do is improve nutrition. I've never been on a piece of land yet that the nutrition was perfect, that didn't have a hole in it somewhere, 365 days a year. And then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to increase what we call recruitment. Those fawns that are alive out there right now don't mean anything to me. If they're alive this time next year, they mean a lot to me, and they've been recruited. So you can drop down one and a half, 1.7 fawns per doe this time of the year, and next year you get there with, with less than a third of those, you're not going to have any bucks. If you're not recruiting at least 40% of your herd, it's mathematically impossible to have mature bucks. So we're going to make those deer survive. And then we've got we to harvest the right deer. Now, how do you know if you have a problem? Well, if your deer <clears throat> look like death munching on a cracker, if you don't have good recruitment, if you have poor antler quality for the age that they're in, and if you have a lot of yearling spikes, and all of y'all know, we do not shoot yearling spikes. They're just a symptom of a problem. We have a quali low quality nutrition problem, so we've got to ask ourselves what we're going to do about it. So these are the things that you've heard a thousand times that grow big deer, but I'm here to tell you, nutrition, nutrition, nutrition is everything. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to manage your property to grow lots of native forage, and then we're going to come up with a supplemental program that works. That works. Landowners always ask two embarrassing questions. What does it cost, and what am I going to get out of it? And most biologists can't answer those two questions, and that's important to be able to. What we do, we learned a long time ago, we radio tracked deer for 20-something years. <clears throat> and we found out that we could make a piece of land better and better and better for deer, and their home range got smaller. But when it got to 80 acres, it would not get any smaller. And so we said at that time, the, the minimum management unit size for deer is 80 acres. Now, I know everybody in this room owns at least 80 acres, and all land is square, right? What we do is we put an 80-acre grid on, over the land, and you got Google, you got everybody now, you can get this stuff. 
And if you just own that much of it, what you do is you go back to each one of these 80 acre grids and you ask yourself, what can I do in each one of those that provides everything my deer need? It has thermal cover, has natural forage, has supplementation, has water. There's got to be a water in every one of those, okay, to maximize your deer production. All right, if the answer, well, not, let's well, see what you can do. The other thing is to look at your neighbor. What is your neighbor doing? And how can we pull those deer or complement what he's got or she's got for their land? So that's thinking in terms of a landscape, okay?